Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me tonight is Jennifer Rose. She's the Executive Director of the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Oh, it's good to be here, Katherine. So good to well, see you. It's been a long time, and so we should let our we should let our viewers know that you and I have known each other for a very long time, over a decade uh, now, yes. I think, um, because we are both Rotarians, and we met through Rotary. You have been embedded in Northern Virginia through your work with several different nonprofits and also Rotary. And so it seems like three years ago when you had the opportunity to become the executive director of the Central Fairfax Chamber, it was a very good fit. You have a lot of relationships. You've worked a lot in this area. And you know that know-how, I believe, has been an asset to you in helping the members of the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce to really flourish, even in the time of COVID. But let's start back at the beginning and give us a little bit of history about the Chamber, because a lot of our viewers may not have heard of the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce. Oh, yeah. Well, either they haven't heard about it or they thought that it went the way of the, the dinosaur. Um, this Chamber has been around since 1958. It is 60, I guess, going on full, almost 63, 64 years old. And it has been serving the business communities of the city of Fairfax, even before it was a city and it was just a town um, through today. And I like to joke that uh, we serve the city of Fairfax and its suburbs. I'm not sure how Fairfax County feels about being called the suburbs of the city, but it's an awful lot of fun. Um, it has a really rich history in the community in its golden glory days, as I like to call it. They, they did great things in the community with scholarships for students. They, um, they helped found the Chocolate Lovers Festival in the city of Fairfax. That's gotta be like the key iconic. feather in the cap. You know, in my mind, that is the, the, the epitome of, of awesomeness. Um, but you know, it, 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 it hit some rough times in 2008 when the economy tanked. Um, some uh, unfortunate decisions were also made at, at the same time. and. A few years later, they ended up going all volunteer led for a while, which is why people kind of forget about us. Um, but they hired me in January of 2018 to to reboot this amazing organization. And that's what I have been working on despite COVID. Um, we we at our peak, uh, we probably had six or seven hundred members in the chamber. Um, today, I have 216 members. But when I started in January of 2018, I had 85 members. It had dwindled down, um, and my priority at the time um, when I came on board uh, was, okay, assess the situation. Remind folks that we are here, we're in the community, we didn't go anywhere, we were just quiet for seven, eight years. Um, get some committees back in place. Uh, the first one I established was our Young Professionals Committee because I wanted to inject that energy um, into the chamber and there's such great things happening in the city of Fairfax and George Mason's in our backyard. It made the most sense to me that that's where I would start. And since then we've, we've gone along, we've added ambassadors because uh, I quickly recognized um, I am a one woman show and I cannot be <laughs> everywhere um, at once. So my ambassadors are a wonderful extension of, of the staff of one here at the chamber. Um, we've added our women's committee. We've got government affairs up and running now. We have a youth committee that um, they are chomping at the bit to get going now that the schools are kind of back in order. Um, just so many great things happening with the chamber. And I think it's important for people to realize that a chamber is a member organization. So your function is to support your membership. And so the programs, and I, you've, you have started or revitalized a number of them. The young professionals, certainly, because when you're younger and you're starting out, maybe you're a business owner, maybe you're a, you manage a business for someone else. The fact of the matter is when you're young, you need to, you need to build your professional network. And you also need to get some wisdom and knowledge from people who've been there, done that too. And I think that's important to realize, to, for people to recognize that you are building a community of business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals here in the city and its suburbs. I do like that a lot uh, as a way of, of just finding support for one another. And, you know, the city itself has gone through a lot of changes. You know, we, we have Old Town Square now, which used to be gravel parking lots 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, the plaza that was built, the, the library that was built, when, when townhouses were built where the old post office was torn down. I've lived here for 20 years. So I've seen how the city has changed and continues to change. And obviously our local economy depends on strong businesses and helping those businesses to, you know, create a consumer economy that shops local. So talk mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit about your efforts there, which have been important. Yeah, I always it's really cliche, but I've always said that strong businesses make strong communities and strong communities make strong businesses. And you're right. We are a membership based organization. We work to support our members. But in, in our work to do that, we're also supporting the entire business community with our education efforts. Everything that we offer, with, with very few exceptions, are open to anyone in the community. They can attend um, our webinars that help them grow their business, that help give them um, information that they may not easily be able to access. Um, you know, We have a variety of, of subjects that uh, we cover with our education series. Um, the partnerships that we have um, within the city, with the city, the city's economic development office. Um, I, I connect businesses to the economic development office. They connect businesses to me. There's a wealth of resources right there. Uh, when we do our chamber uh, orientations, we do them six times a year. I have representatives from the city's economic development office um, come and participate, as well as um, someone from the Fairfax County Biz X office. It's the business experience office. You know, the county can be a little overwhelming. It's so big, um, many, many layers of uh, what seems like bureaucracy. Um, but I can cut right through all that tape to the right person um, to answer questions. So those two gals that participate in our Chamber 101 provide such great information for our, our business owners, things that they may not have known were available to them, whether they're in the city of Fairfax or in Fairfax County. Um, some of the partnerships we have, um, I love working with the um, Old Town Fairfax Business Association. They're a relatively new organization in the city. Um, they were in the works uh, as I came on board with the chamber and um, I've had a great time working with their executive director, Shannon Duffy. Um, we stay in our lanes, but we support each other um, as, as, um, as we should. Um, we have very similar goals. Uh, she's supporting the businesses in a very defined area of the city, um, creating some placemaking opportunities and just encouraging people to support the businesses there. Um, I, too, want businesses to be successful there but I, I spread out a little further, but it's a natural partnership. I also like to work with other chambers in the area. Um, I am one of many, many chambers in Northern Virginia. Um, and because I'm smaller, it's great that I can work with and partner with other chambers to help you know, leverage uh, those resources um, and, and really help amplify what we are all doing in this community. Yeah, and, and you bring up something important. It used to be the Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce. In fact, that was, you know, four years ago, eight years ago. I can't even remember when they went from Fairfax Chamber of Commerce to the Northern Virginia Chamber. And there was kind of a lot of angst over that because you have the Dulles Regional Chamber, the, the Fairfax Central Chamber, you have Reston Chamber, Arlington Chamber, and all of these chambers were like, well, hey, aren't you kind of like grabbing the territory? But they are a large chamber and they do serve an important function. But as we were talking about, you need chambers to support local efforts and local businesses, mm -hmm. which sometimes can get lost in an organization that is large and has members like Volkswagen and mm -hmm. Hilton Worldwide and, yes. you know, people like that. There is a place for smaller chambers. And so I think the, the watchword is collaboration. It, you know, that's what I'm seeing is that people don't feel like they're competing with one another they're collaborating to figure out, you know, where there's an intersection of interests and how people can work together or how one one place or one program has something to offer specifically over another one. And so what you're what you're bringing to, to bear is how you're supporting local businesses. And can you talk a little bit about how you're anticipating the influx of businesses to these um, these multi use developments Scout at the Circle and Moxley? And, you know, some of these new development projects in Fairfax City, which are not old town proper, they mm -hmm. are kind of like on the edges of the city. But they built this mixed use specifically to have restaurants and commercial space within residential, which is kind of new for Fairfax is yes. to do high density housing to support businesses, too. 
-hmm. So what do you yeah. see for the future potential there? Yeah, those um, small area plans that the city uh, put together a few years back have been really interesting to, to watch to see how they've um, grown and evolved. Uh, the chamber has participated in a lot of the meetings. We've participated in the Old Town ones um, that rolled out first, then the North Fax area, um, Camp Washington. Um, there's so many, and it's, it's great to be able to bring some new businesses into the city. Some of them are more of the, you know, the, the national chains, but a lot of them are still small independent businesses. And that's one of the things that I love about the city of Fairfax is we have so many great independent businesses. Our restaurant scene for sure is one like that. We just don't have too many of those uh, big box chain kind of restaurants. Um, it makes the city more walkable when, Folks live right above where they can make, pick up their groceries. If it's Scout on the Circle, they can shop at the Giant. They can grab um, food. They um, There's a new Verizon store coming in. So all these great things right there where they can walk, keeping cars off the road, which we all know there's too many cars on the road <laughs> these days. Uh, so I applaud the city and its efforts to um, to help make the, uh, the city just more friendly for businesses and residents alike, um, a safer place, and certainly uh, opening lots of opportunities for businesses to come in and um, you know do what what most uh, small business owners want to do, which is you know grow, thrive, succeed. Well, you know it's interesting because there was a lot of talk uh, years ago, actually, when they were talking about um, the Old Town Square about how we're not the mosaic and we can't be the mosaic. Mosaic was built out of whole cloth. You know, they mowed down buildings and they built it from and there was a plan. It was a planned sort of community. And so they built in the high density housing strategically with with parking and also with the retail restaurant environment. And so, you know, we aren't we already have existing structures. We have historic buildings and we have strip shopping centers and a lot of car dealerships. And we're going through this redevelopment now because we're trying to reimagine how things built in the 1950s can be redesigned and repurposed to be more uh, inclusive, walkable, and and kind of meld a suburban experience with an urban experience. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot of, of talk about keeping the integrity of our neighborhoods. And so we have to go to a break. But when we come back from our break, I do want you to address a little bit how the chamber stands ready for this influx of businesses in these redevelopment projects and what kind of programs and services, you know, you hope to be able to provide and raise up the visibility of all of these wonderful programs to businesses even considering moving to Fairfax. So please, everyone, join us after this break. Hey, Sanjay. Hey, Rosie, good to see you. What's going on? So I'm gonna hit you up for some medical advice if that's okay that I use you a little bit here. Yeah, of course, use me. Okay, say someone already had COVID, right? That person would still need to get the vaccine. Okay, Sanjay, you're like really scary right now. You're like a mind reader, but yeah, that was my question. Even if you've already had COVID, you still need to get vaccinated. And Rosie, keep wearing a mask. Always. Thanks, Sanjay, you're the best. You're not the kind of guy that makes the doors all sad. Two for three. Never turn their heads oh. on the plane. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Helping. What a nice young man. Pass it on. My goodness. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. I better get out of here. Ooh. <laughs> Maria, so how's work? It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Miss Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. Talk to your doctor about creating a plan that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org.
Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Catherine Reed, and joining me tonight is Jennifer Rose. She's the Executive Director of the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for taking time to be with us tonight. Love being here with you, Catherine. So, you know, I live in the city of Fairfax, so I am in the middle of all these development projects every day. I shop at that giant it's Scout on the Circle. So I, I drive past the empty spaces that have not been filled yet. And Moxley is right across from my neighborhood. So I am seeing these huge parking garages going up and anticipating what coffee shops, restaurants, a dry cleaner. And all of these businesses, some of them may be new to the city. And so in doing your outreach as the executive director of the chamber, you know, what do you offer folks who are coming into the city as new business providers uh, and maybe in a place they've never done business before? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm so excited about all these great new businesses coming in and fully expect them to be beating down my doors um, as they come in. Um, it's already picking up even now with more and more ribbon cuttings and grand openings that we have on the calendar and the schedule, uh, both in the city and the county. But, you know, here in the city, um, what I would tell any new business coming in is one, it's a new community that they need to get familiar with. And we have the connections, um, obviously, with, with the city's economic development office where we can connect them if they've got questions, problems, issues. Sometimes, you know, as you're getting ready to open up, there could be an issue with the permitting process or something's taken too long. Your chamber of commerce can step in, make a phone call and say, hey, what's going on with this? You know, this guy's trying to get his business open and got a little delay. I've, I've done that before for members. I've helped members get their certificate of occupancy um, in line when they thought that their contractor had taken care of it. But there's just there's just so many things that chambers do besides offering the networking opportunities that people always think about the business after hours or the business and bagels kind of events, um, which we didn't get to do very much of during COVID, but we are doing now. There's also advocacy work. You know, we will speak up on behalf of a business with local government, state government, federal government on uh, legislation that's coming through that may impact their business in a negative way. Uh, we are nonpartisan, but uh, we do support pro-friendly business policies. Doesn't matter which party it's coming from, if it's something good for business, we're going to support it. If it's bad for business, we're going to come out uh, and speak out against it. Um, you know, marketing efforts, being able to amplify their voice in the community, helping the community know that, oh, we're here, we're open, come see what we're all about. Um, we can do that um, very affordably, um, no cost, low cost opportunities. Of course, when I'm referring people to um, other businesses, I'm referring them to chamber members first, always. So, and chamber members love to support other chamber members. It's very, um, it's very uh, heartwarming to see that happen. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the education opportunities for, for members that cover the, the gamut. But then there's also cost savings things. One thing that any small business owner does not have enough of, there's actually two things, and that's time and money. Most of our members um, are very small businesses. We're talking fewer than 10 full-time equivalent employees. They're busy running their business. They don't have time to read up on the latest PPP legislation or how to apply for loan forgiveness. They don't, they don't have time to look for a lender uh, or to really research all their options, but they can call me. I, I joke sometimes and say I'm a, I'm a help desk for small business. They can call me and ask me pretty much anything. I feel like a reference librarian sometimes. And if I don't know the answer to their question, I probably know somebody who does know the answer to their question and I can save them so much time to help them find uh, you know, the information that they need um, and provide them with that access. I mean, the cost savings programs that we offer cover everything from office supplies to a telemedicine program to looking at all of your expenses and helping identify where you can save money. It covers the gamut. And I'm always looking for new benefits of membership that will help add value to their membership. Since January of 2020, I have added 14, I think that's right, it might be 15, new benefits of membership for our members. And I'm always looking for more. I've got a couple of more in the works right now, but I'm not quite ready to announce them yet. And they're, and they're strength in numbers, right? So when you're a single business and you're trying to find resources or services, it's you're one person. But when you're part of a larger group and you've got someone negotiating on your behalf, yes, that's a win. That's that's a, a reason enough right there to sign up so that you are in a community and you can negotiate better prices or you've got somebody like the chamber negotiating better rates for you. And so that's something I think it's very important for people to remember. 
Um, there, there also has to be favorites. And I know, you know, just, you, I would never ask you to pick your favorite child. Cause I know you got two, but you know, there's a, there's a war, you know, there's a special place. And one of my special favorite businesses in the city is Cameron's coffee and chocolates. Mm -hmm. Mine and, too. They are, and they are a very unique business. And, and it seems to me that when Jim and Ellen first came here, it was quite by accident that they even settled on the city. And then they discovered this community that loves them and supports them and has embraced them. I saw them at the Fairfax fall festival this past weekend and so, you know, talking about, because I remember, um, is he your board chair, Doug? Because yes. it turns out that he and Ellen worked together in another life. And she they didn't did. realize, she didn't realize until um, he came into the shop that, that he was on, he was uh, a part of the Chamber of Commerce. And so Ellen was telling me, she's like, and he used to like be my boss. Yes. And so I love stories like that too, how, you know, down the road, you reconnect with people you used to know, mm -hmm. but, but that particularly Cameron's coffee and chocolates, you've got, um, and you can explain their model and the fact that they were not business owners before. I mean, they did not own the retail business before and, and they have a very in, uh, unique employee base. And I, and I think the chamber has been part in the EDA and everybody in the city has been part of helping this very unique business be successful. But I'll let oh, you tell yes. that story. I was going to, yeah, 100%. And I can say they are my favorite coffee shop in the city of Fairfax because I don't have any other coffee shops in the chamber. So I could say that and not get in trouble with any of my other, <laughs> uh, any of my other members. But I do love um, Jim and Ellen and Cameron and Cameron's Coffee and Chocolates. In fact, I set on purpose a lot of meetings there. Um, with folks because they're not necessarily familiar with, um, you know, everyone can work, which is the nonprofit behind Cameron's coffee and chocolates. Uh, but they have one, a great cup of coffee and two amazing Belgian chocolates and uh, their sweet treats. Um, we use them for small business Saturday every year. We have treats set up at old town hall um, on small business Saturday, which is the day after black Friday. So mark your calendars this year, November 27th. Um, but we always feature their deliciousness, their hot chocolate, their coffee, and um, it's a pleasure to support them. Um, and I do have a hard time uh, not playing favorites with my nonprofit members, as you know, Catherine. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I've been, I've worked for several great nonprofits in this area, so I've, I've learned just send out when people ask. Oh, we're opening up our. In fact, Planet Fitness is a good example. Um, they're opening a new location at Greenbrier, and they wanted um, a suggestion for a nonprofit to support. We have 22 nonprofits in our chamber of commerce. So I just sent them the list of the nonprofits and you know what cause they support, whether it's you know food insecurity or the arts or uh, workforce development or, or animals or what have you. Sent them the whole list and let them pick. I've had to do that twice in the last couple of weeks, and it's been really hard for me not to push them to certain <laughs> ones. <laughs> But um, you know they're all such great nonprofits and that we have and that we support. Um, I even throw them extras because I know how um, how scarce those resources are. Since I used to work very hard to raise money for a, a few of those nonprofits in the area, but um, being able to support Cameron's is is just you know one more uh, way that the chamber works. Other chamber members will use them to provide treats for their meetings and things like that. So it's another great example of chamber members supporting other members. It, it is. And, and I should mention that, you know, what makes Cameron's unique is that they have a jobs program for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so young adults have can earn a paycheck. They are employees and they are workers in the city and they come to work every day and they make the chocolates and they work in the kitchen and they have very productive lives as employees of a business that was basically created to employ this particular employee employee pool and so the fact that they found a home in fairfax city pleases me no end the fact that the chamber has embraced them and wrapped their arms around them and has encouraged other members of the chamber to recognize that when you support a local business in this case you are supporting the employment of uh young adults who would otherwise have a difficult time finding jobs it's very difficult for this population of people to find jobs. And so, yeah, that kind of warms my heart. And I know that you, you do marry up or match up your nonprofits with other members of the chamber. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think people realize how important it is for that symbiotic relationship to be there. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing that people forget about nonprofits, it's not about cutting a check to a nonprofit, which they would love or providing volunteers to them. 
But these nonprofits have something to offer the business community, whether it's education, whether it's potential employees. Um, there is a great symbiotic relationship, and that's one of the reasons why I've got uh, started this year a community impact council, so I could help bring those two parties together. Now, I had not heard about your community mm -hmm. impact council. I even love the title of it. So, so who are you looking to participate in this? Um, well, I, I don't just want nonprofits. I don't want it to be another chamber of commerce nonprofit roundtable. I have participated in those, and they tend to be a big waste of time, unfortunately. Um, so this one is one to bring the business community together. Some of those business owners, again, I said they're busy. They don't have time to research, look up. They want to to give, but they don't know how. Match them up with some of those nonprofits and and plan some things. We've done some programming already. I did a webinar on serving on a board for our young professionals and what that means. And I hope I planted some seeds for what makes a good board member. Um, we've got another uh, panel discussion this month with our young professionals on making an impact with your community. And we have several nonprofits that are going to participate in that. Wow. That helping young people understand board service is huge because every board is looking for diverse membership. And part of that is young people. A lot of boards don't know where to find young people or don't know where to find young people prepared to mm -hmm. sit on a working board. And so to me, that was that's probably one of the most important things the chamber can do for nonprofits in the area is is find, recruit, train and support future board members. That is so important. Yeah, after the April event, we actually matched up a board member to Bright Paths. Um, and we also matched up an advisory board member to uh, Girls Inc., which is Girls Inspired Ready to Lead. So really excited that we could get a couple of matches made. Well, you are just, this is, I hope, been as enlightening for our viewers as it has been for me, because most of us, unless we're in a chamber, we're not really paying attention to the really the, the community good, the common good, the business good that chambers do. And I really appreciate you being here to share this with all of us, Jennifer. Thanks for having me, Catherine. I could talk about the chamber all day. I know you could, and we will again. Uh, so for those of you who are watching your need to know, this is what you need to know about the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce and what they're doing in our community to both help the economy and the community and the businesses that want to do businesses with you here in Fairfax. That includes the city as well as the suburbs. And this is what you need to know.